This video is sponsored by NVIDIA AI. By 2045, there will be no males left on this planet. We have a chance to fix and most people can fix it. But they don't want you to do that because they need people to pass away. Terrence Howard gives us another jaw-dropping piece of information that turns out to be very concerning. Guys, I urge you to pay close attention and stick till the end. Share this video and join the supporters of Terrence's crucial message. Let's jump right in. In 1970, they did an um, examination of the human body. The average male produced 1,500 sperm per heartbeat. They redid that same test in 2020. The average male produced 10 to 15 million sperm. That's a 2.64% reduction by year. So if you follow that out, by the year 2045, there will be no males left on this planet able to produce sperm. Why? Because of a thing called bisphenol, hard plastics, BPAs or BPHs, or thylates. P-H-T-H-Y-L-A-T-E-S, a nasty word. What it does, because they didn't know what to do with the products from the refinery, so they started putting it in polyester and all of these clothes. But as a result, what plastic does in our, those fine particles does in our body, our body sees, you know, the carbon, estrogen is made from carbon. Testosterone has carbon attributes to it. The adrenal receptors are going around throughout the body. You know, everything okay, everything is okay. And if it's not okay, then the male's body produces testosterone and it fills those receptors. And if it's not okay for the woman, the female's body, her ovaries produces estrogen and they go and their, their body is now in balance. But because of the thylates, what it does, it mimics the estrogen. It mimics the testosterone inside those adrenal receptors. And so now the testes That's don't produce. Producing. And so men become effeminized. There's a guy named Dr. Tyrone that he did a <laughs> test with frogs mm -hmm. and the frogs became homosexual. Females become masculinized mm -hmm. and the males become feminine. And it's something that's a terrible thing that's taking place. And that's what I like um, about the honorable minister. He's constantly been talking about maintain your man card. You don't trade that in, but take care of your body and know what you are putting in it. So stop drinking plastics because by 2045, there will be no males left on this planet, not just within the human speech, the human platform of life, because the plastics is, are in the oceans everywhere. So yeah. no, so you're talking about an extinction level event for everything mm -hmm. in what, less than 26 years. But what's interesting, if you stop drinking plastic today, within three months, your, your testosterone levels come back, your estrogen levels come back. Mm -hmm. If you remove the plastic from it, unless your mother drank from plastic while you were in utero because now there's this thing called the ADG the the anus to genital gap that for a woman is supposed to be twice as far f between um between a male and a female yeah well now the young man you can't distinguish the the distance between the two and so you can't reverse that you can't reverse that okay yeah. so we're not being born with micro penises and you know all of these things and for us of that original age that you know we have a chance to fix and most people can fix it if you mm -hmm. take the plastics out but they don't want you to do that because they need people to pass away here what terence howard says is very true and deeply concerning he mentions that by 2045 there could be no males left on this planet capable of producing sperm this startling prediction isn't just sensationalism, it's rooted in real scientific observations. Let's delve into why this is a significant issue, and why it demands our immediate attention. Tarrant starts by noting a dramatic decline in sperm production from 1970 to 2020. This isn't just a random observation. A comprehensive study published in Human Reproduction Update in 2017 found that sperm counts among men in Western countries had halved over the past 40 years. Imagine that, half the sperm count in just a few decades. If this trend continues unabated, it could indeed lead to dire consequences by 2045. The study highlighted that between 1973 and 2011, there was a 52.4% decline in sperm concentration and a 59.3% decline in total sperm count. The steep drop raises alarming questions about the future of human fertility and our ability to sustain population growth. 
Guys, before we dive deeper into this critical issue, I want to stress the urgency of spreading awareness. It's vital that more people understand and join this conversation. You can help by sharing this video with your friends, or even by creating impactful videos like this one you're watching. The more we contribute, the louder our voice becomes. And if you're wondering how to create compelling content easily, let me introduce you to a tool that has completely transformed my content creation process. InVideo AI InVideo AI is essentially your co-pilot for video creation. It's the world's most used AI video creator. With over 25 million users across 190 countries, whether you're making a quick social media video, detailed documentary, this tool simplifies the entire process. You start with a simple text prompt, and InVideo AI handles the heavy lifting, scripting, editing, and sourcing relevant footage. For example, you could enter a prompt like, create a YouTube video highlighting the dangers of BPA and phthalates on human fertility, and InVideo AI will produce a draft for you. Today, I'm diving into a topic that has been making waves in health circles, but often flies under the radar when we discuss everyday items. If you want to tweak anything, just use text commands. Want to change the narration or adjust the visuals? It's just a few clicks away. You can ask InVideo to change the voiceover to a male British voiceover. Today I'm diving into a topic that has been making waves in health circles. Moreover, a groundbreaking feature of InVideo AI is its voice cloning capability. You can generate videos narrated in your own voice without ever stepping into a recording booth. This feature is not only innovative, but enhances the personal touch of your videos, making them more engaging and unique. You can try InVideo AI for free. But for those serious about video creation, the paid plan starts at just $20 a month. This plan is a steal, as it removes watermarks, gives you access to high-quality stock footage worth hundreds of dollars, and the revolutionary voice cloning feature. So, make sure to check it out. Click the link in the description, or scan the QR code on the screen, and use my code to get twice the number of video generation credits in your first month. Now, let's get back to the video because you must see Terence's detoxifying routine, and you'll be amazed by the end what he says about the powerful vibrations of our words. Okay, so why is this decline in sperm count occurring? And if you're a male, you might want to watch till the end because these changes are already impacting hormonal balance in many men. Terence points to endocrine-disrupting chemicals, EDCs, bisphenol A, BPA, and phthalates as the culprits. These chemicals are ubiquitous in our plastic bottles, food containers, cosmetics, and even clothing. They interfere with our hormones, which are crucial for reproductive health. If his mother was exposed to phthalates, everything can go south. And what happens is the penis is smaller, and the AGD is smaller, and the scrotum is smaller and the testes are maybe not descended. In other words, it didn't finish the process. So we say that that, that pup is incompletely masculinized. BPA, for instance, can mimic estrogen, throwing off the delicate hormonal balance in both men and women. When BPA binds to estrogen receptors, it can lead to various health issues, including reproductive disorders and cancers. Phthalates, often found in plastics and personal care products, have been shown to decrease testosterone production. Research has demonstrated that these chemicals inhibit the enzyme that converts cholesterol to testosterone, leading to lower levels of this vital hormone. This disruption can cause significant reproductive health issues in men, including reduced sperm quality and quantity. Terence also brings up Dr. Tyrone Hayes' research, which is another crucial piece of the puzzle. Dr. Hayes studied the effects of atrazine, a common herbicide, on frogs. His findings were alarming. Male frogs exposed to atrazine developed female characteristics and even became hermaphroditic. This isn't just about frogs. It shows how these chemicals can disrupt the reproductive systems of all living beings, potentially leading to what Terence refers to as an extinction-level event. Like Phthalates are an endocrine disruptor, probably the most disturbing endocrine disruptor, and this is something we should all be looking at, is yeah. atrazine. The hormone that's involved is exactly the same in frogs as it is in humans. A million people a day are exposed to atrazine. It's not just frogs, it's fish we have to be concerned about, and it's not just fish and frogs, it's how they fit into ecosystems. Atrazine and other similar chemicals have far-reaching impacts on wildlife, 
When these substances enter water bodies, they can affect a wide range of aquatic species, leading to reproductive failures and population declines. This disruption of ecosystems can have cascading effects, ultimately impacting human food sources and biodiversity. Now, let's consider how these chemicals affect humans. Beyond just reduced fertility, exposure to EDCs is linked to various health issues like cancers, obesity, diabetes, and developmental problems in children. For instance, microplastics in the ocean are ingested by marine life and, consequently, by us when we eat seafood. These microplastics carry harmful chemicals that can affect our health over time. Studies have shown that EDCs can interfere with the endocrine system, which regulates numerous bodily functions, including growth, metabolism, and reproductive health. Long-term exposure to these chemicals has been associated with increased risks of breast cancer, prostate cancer, and metabolic disorders such as obesity and diabetes. Furthermore, children exposed to EDCs in utero or during early development may experience neurodevelopmental delays and behavioral issues. Terence brings a glimmer of hope by mentioning that if we stop using plastics, our bodies can begin to recover. Research supports this. Reducing exposure to EDCs can improve sperm quality and overall hormonal health. However, the earlier and longer the exposure, the harder it is to reverse the damage, especially if it starts in utero. The reversibility of the effects of EDCs depends on various factors, including the duration and timing of exposure. For instance, adult men who reduce their exposure to these chemicals may see improvements in sperm quality and hormonal balance within a few months. However, for those exposed to high levels of EDCs during critical periods of development, such as in utero or early childhood, the damage may be more difficult to reverse. We are facing extinction, so when people yeah. say, hey Terrence, why don't you keep acting, keep acting, no, I'm trying to keep us alive right now. In a recent episode of the Joe Rogan podcast, Terrence Howard discussed his regimen for detoxifying the body, which ties into his broader concern about environmental toxins like BPA and phthalates. Let's take a look at this video excerpt where Terrence explains his approach. I'm supposed to take this what is that? And Get this too. <laughs> What's in this stuff? Just things to counteract the natural met the metals that we have in our bodies that wear us out. <laughs> and you just take these periodically yeah, throughout the day on a yeah, timer? Yeah, I got to do it now. I got to do it Okay. Now. I take a dropper, part of that dropper, and then four sprays, and it, it removes the parasites from your system. Like oil of oregano, like using oil of oregano instead of using um, um, antibiotics. Terence mentions using products like pure body extract to counteract the accumulation of harmful metals and toxins. These supplements are designed to remove parasites and detoxify the body, which can significantly improve overall health. He takes these supplements periodically throughout the day, on a timer. This disciplined approach helps to systematically cleanse the body of toxins. For instance, he mentioned using oil of oregano as a natural alternative to antibiotics, highlighting its effectiveness in maintaining health without the side effects associated with conventional medicines. Terence's experience with detoxification and health supplements has yielded noticeable benefits. He shared that he used to have thick, dark circles under his eyes, which have disappeared since he started his detox regimen six months ago. Additionally, despite being 55 years old and a smoker, he looks remarkably younger and healthier. He attributes much of this rejuvenation to his detox routine and intermittent fasting. If I'm the only one out there saying it, yeah, you can come and try and hurt me. But if everyone is participating in this, because everyone are, will stand a benefit, I think when, they, when young men and women see one man stand up and they see another woman and man come and grab two of them, then it's a then there's an opportunity for growth mm -hmm. because they know, hey, yeah, you may be able to hurt one of us, but you can't hurt all. And you can't hurt me until the creator says that my work is done. Right. And when my work is done, then I'm open to whatever happened. It could be a microbial that takes me out, but nothing is going to harm mm -hmm. me as long as I'm doing the work of the creator and, and moving our people together just towards truth. That's all I want is absolute truth and transparency. Terence Howard's words resonate deeply, reflecting a broader societal yearning for truth and transparency. Recently, he has gone viral, and this widespread attention suggests that people resonate with his message. 
This indicates a collective hunger for truth and a desire to explore the deeper mysteries of our existence. People are eager for the truth and ready to join in efforts to create a more enlightened and aware society. The increasing awareness and discussion around these profound topics show that more and more individuals are willing to stand up and support each other. When people see someone like Terence standing up for what he believes in, it inspires them to do the same. This kind of unity and mutual support can drive significant change. In another context, Terence elaborates on the importance of the vibrations we interact with and how they significantly impact our energetic health. He confirms what many of us have suspected about the profound effects these vibrations have on our well-being. Let's delve into his explanation to gain a deeper understanding of this concept. Let me I'll backtrack so that okay. they understand why I don't want to use black right. or African. You know, black according to the dictionary means dark and ugly and death and all of those things. Dr. Emoto's work a revolutionary scientist that that realized that water is alive it has memory and the crystallization if you say love to it and then you you freeze it it has these beautiful crystals but mm -hmm. if you say hate and put all that on it it has these malformed crystallizations so a lot water is affected by what we say and where so much of our body is made up of water so every time we say something it can affect it whether it's negative or positive well the term African that wasn't the original name of the continent. The A in Africa in Latin means sunny. The Frica is Greek. It means sunny. The real name of the continent as spoken by 2000 tribes is Alkebula and it meant the birthplace of life. Terence references Dr. Masaru Emoto's work on the impact of words and vibrations on water. Dr. Emoto's experiments demonstrated that water molecules can be affected by our thoughts words, and intentions. He showed that positive words like love and gratitude formed beautiful, intricate crystals when the water was frozen, while negative words like hate resulted in malformed, chaotic structures. Considering that the human body is approximately 60% water, the implications of Emoto's work are profound. If the structure of water can be altered by words and emotions, it's reasonable to suggest that our bodies, primarily composed of water, can also be influenced by the vibrations we encounter daily. Terence emphasizes the importance of using positive terms and avoiding negative connotations. This idea aligns with the understanding that our mental and emotional states can directly impact our physical health. Positive affirmations and a healthy mental state can lead to better physical health outcomes, while negative thoughts and emotions can have detrimental effects. Language carries vibrations that can influence our overall well-being. By choosing words that promote positivity and empowerment, we can enhance our energetic health. This is particularly significant when considering terms that describe our identity and heritage. Terence's choice to use al kibulan instead of Africa stems from a desire to connect with the original, positive connotations of the name, emphasizing the continent's role as the birthplace of life. Beyond Imoto's work, there is a growing body of research in the field of psychoneuroimmunology, which studies the interaction between psychological processes, the nervous system, and the immune system. This research supports the idea that our thoughts and emotions can influence our physical health. For instance, chronic stress and negative emotions have been linked to a range of health issues, including weakened immune function and increased risk of chronic diseases. Terence Howard's revelations about the significant threats posed by endocrine disrupting chemicals, alongside his insights into the power of vibrations, underscore a crucial wake-up call for all of us. This isn't just about the potential future where males may be unable to produce sperm by 2045. It's a present-day alarm that our environment and health are being compromised. Each fact and figure Terence presents from the decline in sperm counts to the effects of harmful chemicals like BPA and phthalates, paints a picture of a crisis that is both ecological and deeply personal. The impact of these substances reaches far beyond individual health, affecting entire ecosystems and future generations. The research of Dr. Tyrone Hayes, illustrating how atrazine alters amphibian development, serves as a stark reminder of how interconnected life on this planet truly is. If we continue on our current path, ignoring the dangers of chemical exposure, we risk not only our health, but the health of our planet. Moreover, Terence's discussion on energetic health, inspired by Dr. Masaru Emoto's research, 
invites us to consider the less visible but equally significant impact of our thoughts, words, and the vibrations they carry. This aspect of our health, often overlooked, connects directly to the physical and environmental challenges we face. By understanding that our bodies are primarily composed of water, which reacts to vibrations and intentions, we begin to see the power of our thoughts and words, not just as spiritual concepts, but as tangible forces that shape our reality. This understanding should compel us to act. It's not enough to be aware. Awareness must move us toward action. As Terence Howard has shown, making personal changes, whether it's detoxifying our bodies, choosing our words carefully, or advocating for environmental protection, can have profound effects. But more than this, we need collective action. We need to support policies that limit or ban harmful chemicals, promote sustainable practices, and invest in clean technology. We are at a critical juncture. The choices we make today will determine the kind of world we live in tomorrow. Will we heed the warnings and embrace the solutions presented by those like Terence? Or will we continue down a path of degradation and denial? The answer lies in our willingness to engage, educate, and empower ourselves and others. Let's not wait until 2045 to see if Terence's predictions come true. Let's take this information seriously, share it widely, and act with the urgency it warrants. Join in supporting Terence's message, participate in community and global efforts to restore balance, and remember, the health of our environment directly affects our personal health. This is our moment to influence the future, to ensure that the next generations inherit a world where life thrives in all its forms. Let's stand together for a healthier, sustainable, and vibrantly alive planet. Man, don't turn my phone off. Don't do that. Every oh, time I get ready, well, because I know they're watching me right now, and they're mad at me. Who's they? Um, 